All right, guys. So, uh, welcome to problem 18 from the fundamentals of chapter four. Today we'll be doing a similar problem, except we're using scalar analysis, uh, meaning we're not going to be doing any cross products or unit vectors or um, or dot pro or dot products. Okay. So first thing we'll do is uh, we have this force of 500 newtons right the first thing we want to do is break it down into its two components this component we'll call it fx y because you know it's on this deep blue uh, plane which is the x y plane it's not necessarily in the x or the y and it's got this component which we actually know which is going to be FZ. Okay, so let's see what that is. So FZ, and they're very, they're very nice to us, and they give us three, four, five uh, triangles here. So FZ is going to be, let's take the 500, right? And then which side of this triangle is parallel to the FZ? Okay, the three. So we'll do that three over five. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. This is uh, 500, 100, 300. So we got 300 newtons. And it's going up, as you can tell from the back there. Okay, now let's find what fxy is. fxy. That'll be 500. 4 over 5, because the 4 is the, the side that's parallel to the fxy vector. So this is 400. Perfect. Now, we need to break the fxy into this component in green, which is pointing in the positive y direction. Right? And then this component In this other green component, which is pointing in the negative x direction. So let's do those two. So f, x, it's going to be negative because it's pointing in the negative direction. And it'll be f, x, y, which is 400. Right? And then let's see what side is parallel to the f is x. It's the three, so it's going to be three over five. Okay, so let's see four hundred divided by five. Ah, can't do that math. That's two forty. Nice. Okay, now let's do f y. Now it's positive, so let's start off with the fxy vector, 400, times 4 over 5. Okay, so we found that's 80, so that's 320 newtons. Okay, so I'm going to delete these. Okay, and now let's now let's focus on. So we already have F Y. We have F X, and we have F Z. So whenever you draw them, just make sure you draw them parallel to their axes. F. Z. All right, cool. Now we're trying to determine the moment about O. Okay, that this, that this force causes on O. All right. Uh, before we're taking the the distance from O to A and then doing the cross product between those two. Okay. And for this, we we don't have to um, you know project it onto an axis like we were doing in the previous ones because they wanted about the x, y, and z. So pretty much computing the moment at the origin 
will give you, you know, your moment like this, moment like my, mx, and mz. Okay, so that's, what, that's our job right now. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so let's start with m, uh, let's do mx first. Okay, and it's a scalar. Okay, mx. So we're gonna take which forces contribute to the moment about the x-axis. Or pretty much which forces try to make this whole structure rotate about the x-axis, okay, in yellow. Well, we know that the x-axis, I mean, sorry, the, the force in the x-direction, because it's parallel to it, it's not gonna contribute any um, any torque, okay, because the cross, the, if you do the curl of things that are parallel to each other, uh, you're gonna get zero, all right? So we only care about the FZ and FY. All right, so let's do that. So first, it's we know it's gonna be FZ, right? So FZ, we have to shift it this distance in green, right? So if, we, if you extend the line of action of FZ all the way down, we have to shift it a distance of two meters right so it intersects the x-axis okay and then which direction will it make it uh, rotate well if we pull if FZ tries to rotate it'll make it rotate in this direction okay the whole structure okay so it's gonna rotate in the uh, if you follow the force FZ with your the fingers on your right hand and you curl them towards the x-axis you should kind of grip the x-axis okay and your thumb should be pointing in the positive x so we're gonna have FZ times that distance of 2 and then what, what other uh, force contributes to that moment well it's gonna be the one in the y-axis okay so the one in the Y, right, there's the line of action of FY, all right, I have to drop it a distance of three meters, okay, so it's line of action intersects X, okay, so now again, follow the force FY with your fingers of the right hand, okay, and you're going to curl them towards X, and now you should be gripping the X axis, Right, like if it's uh, like if you're gripping a rod, and your thumb should be pointing in the negative x direction. So that tells us that we have a, a negative moment by f y, and then the distance we needed was three. Okay, so let's do that same thing for uh, the next few. Y. Again, we don't need to con we don't need to take into account the y force for this. Okay. So uh, let's do that. So the y force uh, we said it was going in this direction. Okay. Oh, sorry, we don't need the Y force. We need the X. Well, I don't know why I deleted that. We need FZ and FX. Okay, FZ, line of action gets dropped all the way down, like projected all the way down. We have to shift it two meters, okay, in this direction. So it intersects the Y. So it's gonna be FZ. Uh, times two. Okay, and then which which way would it want to rotate? Again, follow the force of the of the follow the force with the fingers of your right hand, 
curl them towards Y, let them fall towards Y, and then you should be grabbing the Y axis and your thumb should be pointing in the positive Y direction. So it's like you're going to make it rotate like this. Okay. So, so if you follow that with your fingers, you should get it, the thumb pointing towards the Y. Okay, so it's positive. And now FX would be negative. FX, and at a distance, FX has to be projected down. It's got to be 3 meters as well. Okay, and then last but not least, Need MZ and MZ. Uh, we don't need FZ for this one. Okay. So this is FY. We need FY and FX. So FY. I have to shift it this much so its line of action intersects the Z axis. So it's going to be FY times two, okay, and let's see, if I follow that, follow it with the fingers of your right hand, curl them towards Z, so I'm going to be rotating, and my thumb will be pointing down, so that should be negative, okay, so you're going to make this rotate like this, okay. And FX, okay, FX, I have to shift it, um, let's see, let's, uh, just two again, two meters, two meters in this direction. So the line of action intersects Z. And that'll be positive. So FZ will cause a torque that goes around this way on the Z axis. Okay. Now let's see what this gives us. And remember, we have all the forces here. Okay. So let's do FZ first. So 300 times 2 minus FY times 3. So I got minus 350. Minus 350 newton meters for MX. Oops, sorry, 360. Minus 360 newton meters. Okay, for FZ, for the MY, sorry, MY, 300 times 2 minus FX, 240 times 3, okay, minus 120. Okay. Minus 120. And one thing, over here with FX, don't plug in negative 240, okay? Um, when you take the moments, the direction, the negative or the positive comes out, um, depending on which direction you're making it rotate. So if you make it rotate clockwise, it's gonna rotate, in, uh, it's gonna be negative. If you make it rotate counterclockwise, it'll be positive, okay? So the negative, the, because the force FX is pointing in the negative direction, it makes it contribute a, um, uh, thinking about the z-axis, it makes it contribute a positive torque about that, uh, about that axis. So let's keep going. Newton meters. Then minus 320 times 2 plus 240 times 2. So we have minus 160, minus 160 newton meters. Okay. Awesome. Well, I hope this uh, 
this scalar analysis helps, especially I'm trying to help you guys visualize this. It's a little tough, but let, let's do right before I dismiss you guys. Right before I dismiss class, let's um let's do one this thing real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate it. This is the z-axis. I'm taking my moments about the z-axis. Okay. Fy. If I were to push on this structure like this, you know, in the in the fy direction, this whole thing is going to move. You know, it's gonna be like this. This is the this is a new structure orientation. Okay. And then if I keep pushing it, it's gonna go like this, right? And then keep pushing it. So which way am I making it rotate? Well, I'm just making it clock rotate in a clockwise direction. Okay. So clockwise, so like bird's eye view from the Z axis, so you're looking down in this direction. Okay. You're gonna see this rotate in a clockwise direction. So that means a negative torque. Okay. Alright guys, I hope that final thing uh, helped clear up some doubts maybe. Alright. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Um, ask me questions if you need if you need anything, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.